You wrote in your book, build something that starts something that matters. Yeah, yeah. That fear is yeah. a necessary thing in doing something okay, great. So we're going to sure. conquer our fears together. So one, two, three together. One, two, two three. three. But just to get things going, I thought we could just get to know you a little bit. Okay. So this is a game called This or That. Okay, uh, bungee jumping, uh, Pierre, Perrier, uh, Burrito, uh, Marvel. Uh, we're not going to tell Waterman, Aquaman no, 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 that you no, said no, that. No, no, don't That's tell the, Jason. Don't tell Jason that. Uh, call. Um, oh, man, this is the hardest one you're ever going to give me. I mean, gosh, I'm going to say mountains right. for you there right now. Snowboarding, uh, country. It's a Texas roots right there. <laughs> and Nashville days. Uh, the Office. Um, ooh, man, this is a tough one, too. Uh, what am I talking about? It should be St. Tom's right <laughs> yeah, there. What are you even saying? Uh, I'm going to say Nike. Yeah, very good. Um, mountain biking. Coffee. Hot. Driving. Cupcake. Book. West Coast. Dogs. YouTube. Oh, there you go. Now, we know, we know like you a little that. bit better. I like that, yeah. All right, we can continue. Okay. So I Declare War is basically all about how to confront the version of yourself that you don't want to be. When you think about the version of Blake yeah. that you don't want to be, who is he? Complacent, apathetic, um, comfortable. Are there triggers that bring Blake out? I don't know if you have a name for Blake that you, <laughs> that you don't want to be. Oh, wow. I haven't, I've never thought of that, but um, probably like, Center of attention, Blake. Oh, very good. Yeah, like I feel like when I'm you know, when I'm in my worst self is when I'm craving attention and not acting. I'm acting in a way to bring more attention to myself, and I don't like that part of me. For a while, I got so used to being the center of attention that then, like, it felt like when I wasn't, there was something wrong with me, or I wasn't doing something right. And so, uh, after doing a lot of self work, I realized actually when I feel best is actually when I'm not center of attention. I'm using the attention given to me to kind of highlight other people. Wow, wow, that's very good. Um, you have notoriously journaled. Oh, that's mine. Oh, sorry. Yeah, very good. You can't slide that up. <laughs> you. No. Well, you have uh, notoriously journaled since yes, you were... 15. Yeah, hundreds day? of journals. Almost every day. And is it true or false that... That's you. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm so, I haven't played That's all right. You're while. asking important questions. Notoriously. Ooh. Here we go. I, D, Claire, four. True or false? Nice. Very good. Is it true or false Tom's may or may not have ever been started if it weren't for the journaling. I would say definitely true. I mean, it would, I mean, I mean, part of my daily ritual is to drink strong coffee in the morning and journal. It's harder now with a four year old and a one year old. I don't usually get to choose how my days start. But back in my single days when I started Tom's, it was absolutely my ritual, which causes you to think about things uh, in a big way. Because you're in Argentina, from. you write down in um, basically, you sketched out what the original prototype yeah. shoe was going to yeah. be in your journal. In my journal, yeah. yeah. And even wrote shoes for tomorrow equals Tom's. Tom's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that kind of, so I mean, just to think about that for a second, because I one of the big things I say in the book is writing down thoughts, writing down emotions, journaling. Sure. For me, art and music, that soothes evil, mm, you know yeah. what I mean? So figuring out what's going to- spiritual practice for you. What, whatever it is that's going to, you know, it could be taking a walk without your yeah. phone, you sure. know, yeah. dog. but figuring out your lullaby. Mm. So when you're triggered, when you're keyed up, when you're feeling needy, you yeah. know, when center of attention yeah. Blake wants yeah. to come out, it's what is it going to be that's going to bring that out? But the incidental thing is, I think about you, the ripple waves of that journal entry. Yeah, sure. 88 million yeah. people have shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how many people have eyesight? And yeah. you have a wife. Yeah. Because you met your wife through the company. So think about all yeah. the rest on that journal page. No, I know. Well, I feel like also journal to me is like a, that's fine, uh, is a, um, it, it's it's a form of prayer, really. I mean, mm -hmm. if you really think about like, there's so many different ways you connect to God. 100%. It's like, but like when I'm journaling, I'm writing to someone, to something, you know? And so journaling, I feel like sometimes the words that come out are mine, and sometimes they have a higher, ooh, an ace, first ace we've had. Very good. Um, so we have some big cards coming up. Are there other disciplines besides the prayer and the journaling, yeah. which are synonymous? I completely yeah. agree that they're synonymous. That would you that you would say are fundamental. The every most day. fundamental besides journaling is doing something physical outside. Okay. Not just physical in a gym. Like that's great, and I do that when I need to. But like that's why I love 
being in Wyoming, it's like going for a hike, going for a mountain bike, going for skiing, going for surfing. Like, I mean, my wife says I have um, AA, activity addiction. And, and, you know, cause I literally like, I won't be, like I wouldn't be able to be enjoyable sometimes in the evening when being present with our kids unless I've gone out and physically exerted myself mm -hmm. to a point to where like I have no more of that energy left. Like that's what causes me to calm down. Those are positive additions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, if you could go back and be 15 again, be 20 again, are there any habits you would instill that would be second nature to you that you wish you, now that you, it takes work to do that if you could I put them I have my fingernails. I really wish I don't do that. Like so I'm, if you could I'm actually that. working right now. I have one, two, three, four, five, perfect. Wow. Six perfect out of 10. And then my goal is to get to 10 to 10 by the end of the, the winter. But yeah, that's something I don't know why I do. And it's not like I have- So if a, you could never have adopted that. Yeah, that would be really nice. It, what, do you remember what age you were at when you started? I don't know, my, my dad does it. Okay. And so I'm sure I saw him doing it. Sure. And it's just like one of those things, but it's like one of those things where it's like, why do I do this? Like, why do I hurt my fingers? Like some days like I'll try to go play golf and like my fingers hurt. Okay, like, yeah, but okay. we will interrupt really fast for one more mini game. You I like for mini it? games, yeah, yeah. So I the mini gaming games. involves a deep dive and uh, we did a little deep dive on your socials, oh, gosh, and we, okay. we found some things that maybe need just need additional, you know, clarification. Uh, the or, caption wasn't enough. Yeah, it just wasn't. I'm not very good at captions. Here, here's, okay. here's one. What do you? So that's in uh, Rwanda, and that is a giving trip with Heather on that. Really. Amazing. How many years in Thomas would this be? This is the 2013. Okay. And one of my favorite things about that picture, which you don't see is in Rwanda, after we put these shoes on, we went and had this epic soccer game on this amazing foothill overlooking these mountains. I mean, it was really like something from like, you know, like the most epic movie you've ever seen. And, it, and what I love about giving trips with shoes is almost always the kids want to play soccer after. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Oh, in the new shoes. Yeah, yeah in the new shoes. Cause it's like, it's like, think about like when you were a kid, I don't know if you played sports, but like, you, like, if you played basketball and you got a pair of new Air Jordans, yep. like you literally felt like you oh, could do faster. it. Oh, you're faster. Yeah, you're faster. You're faster. Yeah. And these kids, it's no different. No, yeah. Yeah. Now, is, I think I read in your book that employees at Tom's after two years, they then get subsidized to go on a giving yep. trip. Every, and then every two years after that, yeah. And, yeah. And, and that is kind of, would you say, key to them having the fire in their belly sure, as to 100%. what they do? Well, not just them, because they come back, they tell everyone what they just did, yeah. and it helps the whole organization keep that fire and that focus authentically connected to why we do it. And we I do. think that small practice in has so many transferable totally. you know, realities to many different businesses and, and all that. Okay, here's, a, here's another one. What do we got here? <laughs> that is something called the jet board. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> so that is me hovering about, uh, I don't know, 10, 15 feet above shooting water up, uh, which is on a what on a rack trip. Okay. So the rack is the Rugged Adventure Club. And uh, when I was 29 or 30, right after starting Tom's, I interviewed my dad. So we're kind of like what we're doing yeah, right yeah. now. And um, I read an article, I think it was in Esquire magazine, saying don't wait until you're dad or your mom is like really old and, and late in their life, interview them now because what you can learn from them now, you can actually apply to your life when wow. you're 20. Not and so, you're 16, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I asked my dad if I could interview him, it was over Thanksgiving, and I asked him all these questions, very, very many topics, and I asked one of the questions, do you have any regrets in your life? Now, as a 30-year-old asking a 55 year old, 56 year old, that was a big question, right? And he thought about it and he said, you know, I've, I've been a doctor, I have a great relationship with your, your, your mom, uh, your brother and your sister, like I, I have all these things. He said, but I do have a regret. And I was like, whoa, like this is gonna be heavy. And he said, uh, as soon as we started having kids, as soon as I started my medical practice, I put all my energy into my medical practice, your mom and you guys, which I'm glad, grateful for, but I did not give enough attention to the male relationships. So all my friends from college, all my old buddies, like we just grew apart. Wow. And now I'm 55 and I actually have time to have those relationships because you're going off to college or you're off in college, your brother's getting into college, but I don't have those strong oh, male bonds. Wow. And I really think that I am, um, I, that, that is something that I wish I had. I wish I had invested just enough time in those guy relationships so that as I got older, I had a group of guys to you know keep me accountable, to, to, to uplift me, to share with. And so literally that year, um, I sent an email, or, or maybe even called back then, um, you know, my 10 best friends all the way from like high school wow. through like college, through work life, and I said, 
I, you know, it, we're all gonna go on a trip together for three days, and it was pretty rugged. That's why it was called the rugged adventure. So we like, like, we went fly fishing in Colorado, and you know, it was it was by no means a fancy trip. And then over the years, the joke is with some of our successes, we've been able to subsidize these trips to having really nice things. Like that's in Indonesia. Yeah, oh, okay. So <laughs> that's just, just your regular, yeah. So uh, yeah. this so is like Powell here. This is like, yeah. and so the thing is, is we go on these surf trips and we go on these amazing trips and we, it's still called the Rack, the Rugged Adventure Club. Um, and it's, and it's, the group has changed a little bit, but pretty much stayed the same for wow. the last, we just had our 11th anniversary last year. Okay, well we're in a mini game, but okay. you just brought content out that is gold. Yeah. What you said on interviewing your parents, yeah. Yeah. The group of people that your dad wished he had more in his lives, yeah. you rectifying part of my life. and living yeah. out of that. And I'll tell you this. I mean, I, we'll just end on that one for that mini game. Um, within I Declare War, I talk about how socially isolated middle-aged men who go through traumatic really? events are way more apt to commit suicide yes. with, if they have stress triggers like unemployment, yeah. whatever, yeah. whatever. Yeah. But if men have community around yeah. them, the events have no impact on them. Yeah. And so to think about what you're even just saying uh. and the implications on forward success by by having those relationships in your life. We've had people, you know, like struggling in their careers. Yeah. We've had, you know, um, you know, problems in relationships and the, the the way that they've shown up is phenomenal. And I think it's so unique. The fact we have a text chain and the number one group, number one text I get on a weekly basis is from the rack. And we share serious things, we share funny things. Um, you know, I mean, you know, just uh, one of my one of the guys that's on the rack is Dirk Bentley, the country singer, and he's been a friend of mine since we were twenty. So now, you know, um, you know, twenty two years later, we're still really good friends. He's actually the godfather to my daughter. And when when all the in gun violence stuff came out, I sent Dirks a note and said, "Do not post anything." Like, like there's, the, you know, we have seen what has happened in country music when anyone has stated anything that could be yeah. potentially seen as political and i i sent that to him and i said like because another one of our friends in the group is an actor and he posted something which was you know his his audience was 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 huge and it got a lot of people to send postcards and yeah. all this stuff but it's like dirks don't feel pressure like this is you have a different career you have a different audience like let's not poke the beast here and six days later without talking to me without talking to his wife without talking to anyone he posts yeah. First person in country music to post. Yeah. Since then, many others yeah. have. Who are many of them pro gun, but they don't. Yeah. They're, they're against gun violence. Totally. And I and, think that yeah. that's what's really important to be. They're able gun to owners introduce, themselves. That you can be a gun owner, yeah. but against gun violence, and make your voice heard. And this initiative with you're doing to get to pass universal background checks is, is absolutely amazing. And so, and encourage everyone to check it out. Thank you. And so, but but it goes back to this group of guys, and I was like. I was like, Dirk, I, I called him, he didn't answer. I was like, I saw a bunch of people, all these different comments on this thing. And uh, and he and he sent back a quote from the movie Young Guns. <laughs> and it was, it was says, uh, you know, it was some, some quote where it's basically like, you have to back your brother's, your brother's move. Or when your brother makes a move, you gotta back it. Love it. And I was like, that's what this you group is about. You got a policy in your life. You got someone yeah, who had yeah. your back when life's And bad. so I would say if there's anything, like we have to, find that tribe because yeah. life is inevitably going to have some really dark hard moments and if we don't have that group to fall back on um that's yours yeah. Yeah. um it, it can be even that much harder oh let me ask you this question you having been at the helm of an organization with which what was the peak of tom's employees how many all our, our, in. Probably our biggest year was 2012 and about 550 employees. 550 yeah. employees. We're about 400 now. So you leading 550 employees because you were CEO at that back, time. Back then. And now you're continuing on as chief yeah. shoe giver. Chief shoe giver and chairman. See, yeah. Hire yourself a CEO. Yeah, he's and, amazing. Yeah. And, uh, but 550 people at that point under your responsibility. What was the best thing you found though at leading yourself? Because mm. you, you lead yourself more than anybody yeah, else. Sure. So what helps you lead you more than anything? Quiet time. Quiet yeah. time. Journaling. Yeah. 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 Really. Just because because there's so many people coming at you. There's so many responsibilities. They're so easy to kind of like everyone's trying to like, you know, tell you like, I mean, it's just hard to have perspective until you get quiet. Yeah. And so quiet time is definitely the best thing. Would that be morning or night or? I, I get prefer the morning. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like you kind of start your day a certain way and that has so much effect. Okay. Oh, here we go. I... D, Claire. Oof. And you, my Got friend, have one for the third time, and that means? 
Oh, there we go. And that means we are at our final mini game. Okay. Hey, congratulations, you've conquered War with Friends. <laughs> How many people have have won against you versus lost? Like, uh, am I in an elite group or am I like I common? You're, well, I mean, you tell, no... me, you tell me at the end of the mini game. So here's here's okay. the, this, this, you just throw your cards down. Okay. So you got to look at me right in the eyes. Okay. And and nowhere else. You can okay. Move your hand, move your hands to the edge of the table. Is this like a moment of punk or something? No, 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 no. Okay. So here's what's gonna happen. Here's what's gonna happen. No, this don't look. Amazing. Look right here. Okay. So on the count of three. Huh. We're gonna both put our hand in the hole. We can't look, <laughs> and we have to try and guess together what we're touching. Are you ready? <laughs> this is the fight. Listen, you wrote in your book, build something that start something that matters. Yeah. yeah. That fear is yeah. a necessary thing in doing something okay. great. So we're gonna sure. conquer our fears together. So one, two, three together. One, two, two three. three. What do we got? What do we got? It feels like kids play doh. Mm. Yeah, but they wouldn't be that nice on us. Mm. Oh gosh, slugs. Mm. Is it Nothing's moving. Oh, oops, hold on. <laughs> it feels like a worm, but like a frozen worm in Jackson Hole. Like, oh, gosh. Have you felt that? Well, that's, that's you. That's you. Yeah, no, that's I'm, you. I'm handing it to that's you. you. There's something that. Mm, it's Okay, smells. let's make a guess. I mean, I'm gonna. I, it's not poop. That would be funny <laughs> if it was. Less it's funny. Not poop. Um, I mean, hold on. Whoa, whoa. It's definitely worms. You yeah, think? yeah, yeah, 100%. Worms. It's, it's worms fishing worms. Worms is just a guess. Fishing worms. Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, wow. It's worms and brown sugar, cat which food. is cat food. Cat, cat food. food. Oh, God. <laughs> you put both hands in. I like that. Okay. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> really? Yeah. Both hands. I go all in. You do. Oh, man. That is intense. This